Hello and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, we help members of the public to get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. We give them a choice. Sit down with one of our regular dealers. They're going to try and buy your goods off you for a cash offer on the table today. <laughs> Another 20 on there, 120. It sounds as though, Mike. Yeah. We have to auction. Sounds no, like Jimmy, it. Jimmy, do it. Sounds like it. If I don't think that's enough money, there's an alternative. Place the same goods into an auction in the hope that you will get a Five, little 40, bit more 40, money there. 45. Today, the show comes to you from Bristol City Football Club. There's a cracking crowd of people here. They've been here since early this morning. They are determined to do business. You know why? They want to walk away with the real deal. The early birds are first through the door, and I wonder what they brought to tempt the dealers with today. First up, we're over to Mark, where Stephanie's trying to flog an unwanted gift. Well, you bought me in a lovely diamond brooch here. Yes. Could you give me a little bit of history on the piece? Yes. My husband bought this for me about two years ago mm -hmm. in an auction. It was described as a Royal Artillery brooch, which it proved not to be. Later. Absolutely correct. Yes, and uh, I particularly wanted a Royal Artillery brooch yeah. because my late father served in the Royal Artillery. The, the Royal Artillery brooch is the cannon. Very, yeah. very, very famous yes. brooch. This, as I'm sure you're well aware, is Royal Engineers. Yes. Yeah. So we have a brooch here which is the Fusilier's grenade with your beak underneath, which is Latin for everywhere. So I'll bring this over, have a good look with the eyeglass, and there we have it. This is 18 karat white gold. Oh, yes. Okay. We have a different mix here of diamonds. They're what we call eight cut diamonds, and there are full cut diamonds. Yes. Some of these have been replaced. They're falling out over the years, and they've replaced them. I look at this brooch, and I am sure this is made between 1914 and 1918, which is the First World War period, and given by the officers. It was actually given by them to their sweethearts. Yeah. So the sweetheart would wear the brooch on their lapel, and you would know that their other half was away serving, possibly in France, for England. So you were kind of like taken, do you know what I mean? Yes. It was a way of, way of saying, look, you know, my other half isn't here, but... I'm taking and, 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 and they were lovely things. Really, it just comes down to the value. So I suppose I better get some money and put it on the table for you. Yes, that would be good. Right, so let's put that there, pop it there. Right, okay. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. 120, 140. 160, 180, 200 pounds. Well, it's good. Ah, it's baby. Well, Stephanie, whose sweetheart were you, can I ask? <laughs> because uh, it's a fabulous little item, that, isn't it? It is. Um, estimation, 2 to 250. Yeah. Independent valuers, auctioneers. Already a good, sound offer on the table. I'm going to leave you with Mark, he's always fair. See if you can persuade him to give you a little bit more, and then I'm sure it's not really worth the gamble. No, right, thank you. What I'll do for you, if I put on another £20, which is £220 there now, we've gone past now with the commissions, the top estimate. So that's what I'd like to offer you, and it's entirely up to you, Stephanie. And that would be your last That offer. would be my, my final offer. Well, I think with having to pay commission if I took it to auction, it wouldn't be a great deal more than that anyway, so I would accept that offer, thank you. Are you happy with the offer? Yes, I am. Thank you very much, Stephanie, it's a deal. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you. So diamonds really are a girl's best friend. For this next deal, seller Michelle is hoping she can apply the right amount of pressure on our Michael. The Duke and auctioneer Liz Poole are eager to get a look in too. This is a very nice uh, barograph, isn't it? Mm hmm thank you. Tell me what you know about it. I don't know anything, actually, at all. Um, I found it this week clearing out my grandparents' property. OK. Um, and thought that it was nice. And did your grandmother have anything to do with the weather? No, nothing at all. Because that's what this is for. A barograph will tell you 
what the atmosphere is going to be like right. and hopefully tell you what the weather's going to be like. And the best makers of barographs and barometers, a very similar sort of thing, are uh, Negretta and Zamba. Mm -hmm. And that's what this one is. Right. So when we look at this, we've got a little drawer here, yeah. which we'll open up, we'll have a look. And you've got your, your sheets here, which you put round every day. Right, so one I of these see. will go round, and that will be a 24-hour uh, marker on there, which you keep, and then you tell in a year what it was like this time oh, last I year. Oh, I see, right. So it's like, it's, it's like a boy's toy. Yeah. <laughs> um, in that, a gadget oh, of the day. Very much a desk item. Right. This one's coming into turn of the century, so we're looking at, I would say, about 1930 Okay. this one. It's in an oak case. Right. This is a nice bit of oak round here. And you, I think you can tell it's been put away because mm. it's in such good condition. Beveled edge glass, also a good sign of quality. Yeah. And this comes off. So we take that one off there. We put that down there. And this is the workings, all tacked and in uh, in good order, really. Well, Liz, I suppose I'd describe this as a working antique. A barograph, uh, it's an instrument, a technical instrument. What do you think about the condition of this, first of all? It is in very good condition. No chips to the glass, nice beveled glass in the case. Where are you going to place your valuation on this, your estimation? Two to three hundred. I think two to three hundred is probably about right, especially because of the condition. It's certainly worth a good couple of hundred pounds. Um, is Michael Hogburn the type of person, the diamond geezer? Will he go for, <laughs> will he go for something like this? We're about to find out. Let's see what he puts on the table. So, Michelle, it's just about the money, really, isn't it? I think so. I like it. I, I'd like to make you an offer for okay. it. Okay. And uh, I'll come in at 50, 100, 150. Opening offer, quite strong. Not strong enough. Do you know, you've got to think about me selling it. Yeah, Still and you said you like it. And it's I like a nice it, yeah. Piece. That means more money, doesn't it? If I like things, I know it means yeah, more money. Yeah, and it's I a good name. It's a good name. So it's good enough to go 160, 170, 180. Still not enough. It's David, he might help. You know that Michael Hogburn, affectionately known as Hoggy to myself, is a barometer of the antique business. Oh, love <laughs> it. Um, I love it. Now, what has Michael put on the table? I've gone 180, but I will go more. I like it. You see? He's very amenable today. <laughs> I find that if I... Have you seen the clothes he's wearing? Voila! <laughs> very dramatic. Very retro he likes to be. Lucky you know. Green. Lucky Green. Lucky Green. He's a good dealer, mm. and he's got a few quid, so I think you could perhaps press him for a little bit more. Fine. Because of its age, I'm going to say, if you get the kind of 200-ish and move a little bit over there. Yeah. I think the 300 is maybe ambitious for the age of this instrument. Okay, thank you. Do you know, that is really sound advice, Michelle, okay. if you think about it. So, I don't mind, I'll give you a little bit more. Okay. Where are we at, 180? Yeah. I tempt you with 190. I tempt you with 200. Uh -huh. I think I'd like to push you a little bit more. How far would you like to push me, like off the podium? No, not until you give me your money. <laughs> but I tell you what, 200 is good for me. Would so. you consider another 10? Um, do you know, for the sake of it, I would. Go on then. 210 it is. Let's do a deal, Michelle. Fine. Thank you very much. Thank you. He's actually bought it. He has. Good luck, Hoggy. Yeah, thank you, David. Weather's good again, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> What a fine deal. Off to see Corrie now. Sally Claire is keen to show off her lovely figures. So why are you bringing them along to sell? Um, my mother passed away a couple of months ago and I've inherited them and I've got nowhere to put them. I do like them, but... Well, they are sweet. Do you know anything about them? Nothing at all, other than that they're made of porcelain. And do you That's remember them being in your mother's house? Um, yes, I remember them from when I was quite young, but she never... She was too fond of breaking them, so they're always stored away somewhere. OK, let's have a look at them. Right. And they're porcelain, yeah. they're hard paste porcelain. And they're marked underneath with an S and a cross sword, which I think is Sitzendorf, a German factory. Mm -hmm. And they appear to be all sorts of trades or activities 
from what yeah. looks like the 19th century. Some of them look a little bit earlier, but I think they're all late 19th century, early 20th century. Let's have a look at the soldier. And there he is, he's got his, his hat off, and mm -hmm. he's obviously swallowing large amounts of beer or whatever <laughs> soldiers do, and very nicely marked as well. Mm -hmm. And they look to be in very nice condition. Well, let's put some money on the table and see how we get on. OK. Let's put 20, 40, 50. No. She's so no. definite. She goes, yeah. no, no, no. no. <laughs> Here's David. He's going to give you a hand. Well, I've Is looked that... at the independent valuers and the auctioneers, and they're saying 120, 180, 100, 150. I'm looking at those and saying there's 12 of them. They are Sitzendorf. They are 19th century. They are fabulous. I would have thought those have got to be worth a couple of hundred quid, but one's got to be fair to the dealer. They've got to sell them. If I was in the game, I'd snatch those up and get them flogged. <laughs> well, that's me in my box. Yes, yes. Well, it's really, <laughs> truly, yeah. <laughs> I don't think there's any doubt about this. I'll put another 20 on. So you've got 70 there. No. <laughs> so they're off to auction. They are indeed, yes. Well, thank you. I wish you the yeah. very, very thank you best very of luck. Thank you. Claire was having none of that, was she? She's off to join David in the sale room to see if her pretty porcelain will do better there. What did you think about that offer? Far too low. <laughs> <laughs> well, we felt the same. Well, I did, certainly. I mean, I think at 70 quid, and there are 12 figures, they've got to be worth more than that. They're coming up now. The estimate is one to 200 pounds. The reserve is 100 quid. I'm going to say, don't worry, if they don't make it, if the people are not here, take them home, because they're yeah. worth more than 100 quid. They're worth more than 10 quid a piece, that's for sure. Yeah. They're coming up now. Let's see how they go in the sale room. Rather nice set of 12 Zitzendorf porcelain figures, circa 1880. What should we say, 50 to start? 12 of them, 50 bit at 50, 5, 60, 5. At 65, at 65, 70, 75, 80, at 85, 90, at 90, at 90 with the gentleman in front, 95, 100. They're at the £100 reserve. Now, at 100, gentlemen's bid seated, is there any more? At 100 pounds, we all finish then at 100. 100 pounds, we've got commission to take off, 15%. I make that 85 quid. Now, what's your first reaction? Well, it's... A bit it's disappointed? Great. No, not really. In all honesty, no, I'm not. I'm glad that, you know, so. they're going somewhere, yeah. OK. Rather than be stuck in a cupboard. All right. Yeah. Um, I still think they were cheap. They were little beauties, but that was the real deal. <laughs> Michael's <laughs> handing out birthday it's presents. It's my birthday, Molly, remember yeah. that. Oh, you Gonna get treat. the birthday bit out first, that's a fiver, because it's your birthday. Thank you. That's not the offer. No. But no, is he money. going to be as generous when it comes to doing a deal? Well underway in Bristol, where a pretty thing has landed on Simon's table. Yeah. Hi, Amy, I'm Simon. Well, Amy, you brought in this painting. Now, how did you come to own this? Um, it was actually in my auntie's um, attic when she moved. Um, she found it there. It must have been the owner before who lived there. Oh, right. um, so she said she didn't want it, so um, we quite liked it at the time, so we took it. And have you found anything out about the painting since you've had it? Um, obviously, that it is just used, it was a prize, so obviously um, the winning pigeon would have had that painting taken. Right, well, it's by a, a, an artist, and, and we can quite clearly see who it is, Andrew Bear. Yeah. And he was actually quite well known for painting prize winning birds. Yeah. And then at the bottom here, we've got this um, inscription, NTU. Now, I understand that stands for National. Tipplers so, Union, and yeah. that's another type of pigeon, isn't it, a tippler? Yeah, I so believe it's just a virgin. It's, it's a version yeah. of, of pigeon. Um, this is dated 1934. I think one of the nicest things about the painting is the background there, which is yeah, sort of like a sunset going on, and it's got quite a lot in it. Just It's a little bit more than perhaps just it seems at first. I think it's yeah. a nice quality painting, and I think it's a reasonably commercial item, to be honest with you. The question is, is how commercial and how much is it worth? OK. Well, Amy, I think your pigeon is worth 20, 40, 
60. 80. You can tell me to stop if you want. That's okay. <laughs> 100. 120 pounds. Okay. What do you think about that? I think it's a bit more. A bit more than that. A bit more. Yeah. I quite like yeah. it actually. It is nice. I think this is worth to sell. Sort of around the 150 mark, somewhere around there. Okay. I don't, it doesn't look like a painting would be worth over 200 to me, no. but I think if you could sell it under 200, you might find a, a market for it. Definitely. So what I'm prepared to do, is I'm prepared to put another one down and make 140. Okay. That's going to be as far as I'm going on it. W would you like David's advice? Let's yeah. See what he thinks yeah, about okay. it. Yes, okay. Well, <laughs> it's a tricky one, Amy. This artist is quite well known regarding, you know, uh, painting pigeons. 180 to 250 is what both the independent valuer and the auctioneer say. Yeah. Well, can it fly at auction? We have to get it in. Can it fly at auction or is that its money? I think if, if you are halfway within the estimate between the 180 and the 250, I'd say, is it worth the gamble? But I would have thought it probably is worth 200 quid or perhaps a little bit more. Nice image. Nicely presented, a good chance of doing better at auction at the moment. Thank you very much. Okay. Right, Amy, well, there's 140 on the table. Okay. I'm still going to stick at that. So you have to, have to make a decision about whether to gamble or not and try your luck in auction. No, I think I will take the money today. Good choice. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming in, and I hope you enjoy spending the money, and thanks for bringing in your tip -lock. Thank you very much. <laughs> Heading over to Michael, where Jimmy's hoping this deal will be child's play. Tell me about it. This I bought with my pocket money about 50 years ago down at Bristol Arcade. Right? right. Two bob a week. I, I save up for what's that? Nine weeks for that? Because he was 16 and 11 punts. Process to no, the I believe you, right? Jimmy. You look like an honest man to me. Yeah. There was three in the set, three in the set. Right. That one, the baby, and you had one about 18 inches and one about two foot. But they was they was pounds, obviously, I couldn't that afford like to buy them. That's money. years pocket money, that's right, Mike. Yeah. Tell me about these ones. That one, the, the white horses, the Kent Fire Brigade, my Auntie Rose bought me that when I was about 10 years old. That one I got at a car boot sale years ago, and I just couldn't believe it. I thought, the one with the black horses, look. Different, look, see? And one is rarer than the other. But I'm not sure. I don't no. know which one is the rarest of the two. This is plastic, Jimmy, isn't it? Plastic, yeah, but it's Louis Marx, Mike. It's Louis Marx. That's I like a, a Louis Marx. Because that's, that's a collectible name in toys, isn't it? It's a Louis name. Marx. I yeah. love your accent. Yeah. <laughs> dust? Yeah. Of course, it's, it's great. dust. And um, battery operated? Battery operated, yeah. The secret was yeah. take the batteries out when you weren't using them because they did corrode, didn't they? What? So, you, you grab it, all right? You grab it. Oh, no. I'll ah, it. wrong. Reverse, see? Would have failed your test then, look. Look at that. It's a worker. I'll just reverse it back in position. That's it. Parking up again. Coming through, Chef. Coming through. That's brilliant, isn't it? I mean, Absolutely brilliant. 50 years old, the tracks look rubber. It's not rotted. Begs the question, why are you selling them? I thought, well, it's my birthday today. Right. It's happy birthday. Thank you very much, Mike. Yeah. Thank you very much. Bear that in mind when you're putting the spawn doodits down yeah. for me. Right. So I thought, well, what can I do today? Dickens is a real deal. Yeah. Let's go down and see if we can uh, no. do a deal on me toys, right. me old toys. I love it. If, if there's a collector out there, look, like I say, that Louis Marx name, I've heard that on the telly before. Yeah. And like you say, it's plastic, but it's, it's collectible. The tin, they like the tin plate ones, Jimmy, of those. They like the tin plate ones more so than the later ones, and this is later for uh, Louis Marx. Box is nice, though. We like a box, box you like a box, don't we? Yeah. Toy collectors, we love a box, yeah. don't we? Yeah. Let's talk money. It's my birthday, Mike, remember get, that. I'm going to get the birthday bit out. I'm going to get the birthday bit out first, that's a fiver. Because it's your birthday. Thank you. That's not the offer. No. Jimmy, Thank that's just much. for your birthday. Get yourself right. half a lager. I'll have a half a point on that, yeah. yeah. What shall I do? I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go 10, 30 quid. That's it, is it? 10 or each? Well, do you know what I'm doing? I'm doing 25 quid on oh, that and right. a couple of quid each for those. Oh. Well, it sounds as though. <laughs> you got a deal. You got a deal, mate. It sounds as though, Mike. Yeah. We've off to auction. Sounds no, like Jimmy, it. Jimmy, do a deal. Sounds like it. 
Yeah, well, keep the father for your birthday. <laughs> Thank you very much. And happy, Thank happy, you very happy, much. Happy return Thank to you, auction. Mike. Hope you have a Thank nice day. Thank you very day. much. That's Thank all you. Right. Many happy returns from me too, Jimmy. Now, surely your character alone should attract a buyer in the sale room. On the dealer's day, you sat down with another character. Yeah, Mike. You yeah. know, the Diamond Gears. <laughs> Michael. I thought he was mean, Mike. I thought he was Mike. mean, but I had to take it back because it was my birthday and he okay. gave me a fiver for my birthday. Did you hear that? He gave me a fiver Michael? for my birthday. Thank you, Mike. Thank thought you, you were mean, Mike. but you did give him a I fiver did think for his... I was mean, but I, I had to apologise to you because you'll give me a fiver for my birthday. Thank you again. Well, he's that yeah. kind of fella. He's nice, yeah. He's, he's nice, nice I've changed my mind, Mike. OK. You. Right, so £30 Michael offered. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy thought it was a bit on the mean side, but to be quite honest with you, it's only a plastic toy. Um, they don't bring a great deal of money. They're coming up now. Showing on the stage. Very nice. What should we say? £20 to start. 20 bid at 20. At 20. At 22. 25. 28. In front at 28 now. 30. 32. At 32. We can sell that then at £32. Gentlemen in the front row, at 32. The gavel has gone down at £32. We've got some commission to take off the £32, and I think that makes about 27 quid. Happy? Yeah, I'm all right, yeah. On the day, still, the mean offer, as you say, Hoggy, you had the real deal, mate. Yeah. It wasn't that mean. Thanks again, Mike, for the fiver. Thanks again for the fiver for his birthday, Hoggy. Thanks, David. Back to the bustling dealer's den. We join seller Phil, who's hoping his items will be worth their salt. Well, you've bought me in a lovely set of uh, four salts here. What can you tell me about them? Um, bought them about five years ago in a shop in Stratford on Avon. Um, I like the fact that it was a set of four. We collect Bristol Blue glass, so I like the Bristol Blue liners. Um, I then did some research and found their London 1747. Uh, David Hennel is the maker. And it's his very early mark, it's his first mark. So uh, that's the reason why he bought them. I just thought they were a very nice set, and of course, being a complete set of four. That's right. I mean, normally, these sets are broken up. You normally have two, or even you're going to lose one, and sometimes there's only one. Yeah. The thing about these is, I know you've bought them for the Bristol blue liners, but they're not original. They would never have had these liners in there. If you take the liner out here, if I can turn and show you there, can you see the gilding inside? Yes, I did see the gilding on all yeah. four. Well, this is a mercury gilding, mm. and the mercury gilding would have been right the way through. So when they put the salt directly inside the inside the salt, yeah. it doesn't corrode into the silver. That's right. But you are correct, yeah, they are. I guess so. Yeah, they are by David Hennel, the, uh, 1747 George II, and it is nice to get a set of four. There's obviously been a lot of wear where they've polished them over the years. It's created some holes and they flooded some silver in from the back, back of this here yep. to repair it. Um, but it's been done quite well. So if you like these sorts so much, which you obviously do, what's the reason for selling them? Basically, we, we, we just don't collect silver. And uh, I actually give these a gentle clean before I brought them along which I think reminded me why, why we don't collect silver, really. <laughs> As so many people uh, yeah. nowadays are finding out. I'm going to get some money up for you. Good. How about that? Excellent. Right, let's go into the old pocket here and have a look yep. see what we got. I like 50s in particular. You set. like 50s? 50s, yeah. It's just nice to have oh, a set. I, I, well, I tell you, I think we've got to start a bit smaller than that. <laughs> so we're going to go for the 20s. Okay. But I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to do 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 pounds. How does that sound, Phil? Um, no one here at Mark, sorry. No, no, no one here. No one here. Um, another 20 on there, 120. No, sorry. Well, we're kind of to the area now that I want to be, but I think it's a good time now for David to come in and give you some advice. OK. Thank you. Now, the independent value has had a good look at these. First of all, they're George II. They're a great name, Hennel, but has been pointed out to you there's been a fair amount of work. But 150 to 2 is both the independent value and the auctioneer. Think within that area or gamble and go to auction. There's a chance someone will look at those and think, oh, next dinner party, I want those on the table. Thank you, David. I'm going to take back the 20 because you said earlier on you like the red ones, don't you? So yep. what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a red one, 150. 
I need to push you further, please. I'm going to put one more down. It's 170 pounds on the table. Can I uh, consult the boss? Please do. See if she nods or yeah, I'm getting getting a nod. So, That's fantastic. Yeah. I like you. <laughs> okay then. We got um, a deal? Yeah, that's the thing. That's so. great. Thanks, Bill. Much appreciated. Thanks. Thank Cheers. you. After the break, there's a surprise in store for Rebecca. Um, I was actually given it by a friend, um, thinking it was a bit of costume jewellery. But it's not costume jewellery, it's gold. <laughs> so how much is it worth? Where have you been? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. Now, our next seller, Rebecca, obviously has very generous friends. This is yours, the brooch. Yes. I was actually given it by a friend, um, thinking it was a bit of costume jewellery. But it's not costume jewellery. No. <laughs> no, it's gold. Yes. <laughs> so was that a nice surprise today? Yes, very nice. Good, good, yeah. good, good. That's what I like to hear. Let's have a look at it. Right. It's like a honeycomb, isn't it? These yeah. little shapes interlock, and in each shape, there's a little stone. And these are little diamonds, little eight-cut diamonds. And in the middle, a little pink stone, which I think is either a garnet or a ruby, hard to tell. And it's been made as a brooch. Yeah. It's lovely, beautifully made, pretty little stones. Do you like the design? It's different, yeah. I do like it because it is different and it is well, pretty. Yeah. I mean, I would agree with you. I think it's different. Yeah. And I think either you're going to like it and wear it or you can admire it for being different yeah. and then put it back in the drawer. Yeah. Hmm. Let's see if we can put some money down. <laughs> We're going to put 50, 100, 150, One seventy. How do you feel about one seventy? Um, I think I would like a bit more. One ninety. Two hundred. It's two hundred on the table. Um, can I squeeze you for a bit more? <laughs> <laughs> you have to say this firmly. <laughs> <laughs> Can I squeeze you a bit more like you really mean it? <laughs> OK, well, listen, I'm going to put another fiver on. Mm -hmm. 200 is what I wanted to pay for it. But I'm going to put two five on the table. And how would you feel now? Do we have a deal? I think I'd take it to auction. You're going to take it to auction? Yeah. Can I squeeze you a little bit further? <laughs> take away the five, take away the ten, twenty. Ten back again. Two hundred and twenty. Um, I think I'll take it to auction. But thank you. I wish you the very best thank of luck you. at auction. Thanks. Well, Rebecca, you turned down a high offer there. Let's hope it goes your way at the auction. And David's noticed something Corey didn't. You can see that Rebecca has a great smile on her face, and you know why. We only have to look down to see that little bump on your tummy to know how many months. Six months. Probably. Okay, you're absolutely glowing. Can I <laughs> say you. that? They say that uh, pregnant ladies are glowing, and certainly Rebecca is. Now, you brought along on the dealer's day a gold coloured, we call it gold coloured, but I think it is gold, uh, uh, metal diamond and ruby pendant yes it's coming up now there is a 200 pound reserve have you done the right thing well we'll know shortly depends who's here in the room if you sell it i'm sure the money will come in very handy with the arrival of our new friend here we go now let's see what it brings in the room what should we say 100 pounds put it in 100 pounds 100 bid now 100 100 looking for 110 110 120 130 140 150 160 170 180 190 at 190 200 210 they're at 200 your reserve 210 you're in luck selling then at 210 if you're all done at 210 210 pounds we've got some commission to take off that a quick calculation it's close to 180 i think 178 pounds now satisfied yes very happy with that it's going to come in very handy very shortly <laughs> yeah. 
hopefully, but the real deal, Corey Jeffries. Corey, £220. How do you do it, girl? Right on the money. Now, is this next item going to give Simon a licence to print money? What can you tell me about it? Um, it was bought in a charity shop by my husband. Um, all I know is that the artist is Winston Churchill's granddaughter, right. and that it's an artist proof, but I don't really know what an artist proof is. Right. Well, it is indeed by Edwina Sandys, who is, as you correctly say, Winston Churchill's granddaughter. Um, an artist proof is when they're going to do a run of prints, um, normally in a limited edition, the first strike, the first one that comes off, is the artist proof, which is signed always by the artist. Okay. And then they do the run of however many editions there's going to be. So with this, it might have been 200. And when people collect limited editions, they like the low numbers. So one right. of 200 is worth more than 200 right. of 200. Okay. But of course, an artist proof is even better than that. It's the, it's the very first strike that okay. they do. I think this probably dates from about the 70s. It, something like that. Yeah. I think it's pretty typical of her style, isn't it? With yeah. this sort of plain, uh, uncluttered clown and the girl on the trapeze and a very, very sort of uh, colourful background. Yeah. I mean, I guess it sort of depicts a circus, doesn't it? Yes. I mean, I love the, the little school children in the background there with their caps on. And, I, you know, I, think, I actually think it's very attractive. It's one of those things that you probably look at you either love or you hate, to yeah. be honest with you. Yeah. <laughs> why, why are you thinking you're selling it, Kelly? Um, I, I don't really like it that much, to be honest. No. I don't really know how to price this, so it's a bit of a shot in the dark. OK. But I would pay you 20, 40 of those English pounds for it. Um, no, I was expecting more than that. More than that? Yeah. Everyone's always expecting yeah. more. Um, were you expecting a lot more? A fair bit, yeah, I've got a rough, rough price more. in my mind. You've got a price in your mind. What I'm going to do, Kelly, is I'm going to put down another £20. Yeah, look, David's here. Let's get David's opinion of it. It's a tricky one to value, isn't it? 60 to 80 is what the independent valuers are saying. There is £60 on the table. You were fortunate to buy this for a tenner, weren't yeah. you? I'm going to say, under those circumstances, pass it round a little bit, don't be too greedy, Say to Simon, 60 quid, good return on my money, take it, sell it, make a nice profit, and good luck to you. It's okay. not often we hear that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's okay, then I'll go with what David's saying, I'll yeah, set the money. 60 pounds. Yeah, Thank you very much for coming in. Thanks so very much. So you can tell your husband you did quite well with his £10 <laughs> purchase now. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks very much Thank for coming you. in. Coming up. Corrie's feeling the girl power. That's what I like to hear. I like yes. to hear a woman spending some money on herself. Yes. But Denora and Delora share the love. Nice round figure. How do we feel? Um. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. Things are just starting to wind down here in Bristol. For our last deal of the day, we're over with the girls. And you brought along this collection of coins. And how did you come by them? Um, stepdad, uh, David, was um, an, an avid coin collector and a collector of gold. And uh, he passed away suddenly about eight years ago. So um, this is just, well, just a sample, really, of some of the, 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 the items that he had. But it's, um, I think it's time to start moving on, really. So. Yes. yes, and I agree with that, yeah. yes. Do you mind me asking what you'd like to spend the money on? Well, I think we'll have a break somewhere on a nice <laughs> holiday, actually, yes. Good. That's what I like to hear. I like yes. to hear a woman spending some money on herself. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because you've picked a good time to sell them, as you yes. know, metal's high, so, so yes. it's a good time. Silver is doing really well. It's mm -hmm. much better than it was when he bought them, so he's yes. made a very yes. good investment. Yes. But let's look at what they are to begin with. They're called Betjeman's Bygone Britain. And John Betjeman wrote about architecture. Mm -hmm. He was very interested in English architecture. So these commemorate great buildings in England. So you've got here uh, Old Newgate Prison in London. You've got uh, the Queen's Baths in Leeds. Some mm -hmm. very different buildings, not just all cathedrals, but buildings that he chose of being architect of architectural mm -hmm. merit. Mm -hmm. And they come together in this lovely presentation folder. And you have got one, two, three, four, five, six, six by six. You've got 36 of them. Do you have an idea how much you're going to get for them? What um, they're worth? An idea. 
a, a small amount, yes. Yeah, 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 so yeah. You, you have a small idea, but <laughs> yeah. you've got a big idea. Yes. You've got a real idea. Definitely. So it's you I'm going to be negotiating with, <laughs> okay. isn't it? Yeah, right. I'm going to put some money on the table and see how far we get. Okay. So we're going to start with 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 350, 400, 450, 500. That's a nice round figure. How do we feel? Do you want to have a little talk? Oh, no, you're yeah. going to be the... Well, I'm going to squeeze and see if we can ah. get a little bit more. I think you've got somebody to help you squeeze me. How much is on the table there? £500. Well, in some ways, I have to say, what's on the table is a pretty good offer because... These limited editions that were sold for quite a lot of money a few years ago, they just haven't stacked up. It's a bit like pension funds. I'm afraid to say you're not always getting what was advised you may get. Okay. And I can tell you 480 to 550 is the estimation. Okay. 500 is on the table. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to use this word to upset you, but if you scrapped them, there is £590 worth. £500 is a very good and fair offer, mm -hmm. and I'd have no hesitation taking that. What is on the table, I think, is as good as you can possibly get. Mm -hmm. And if you go to auction, I think it could be less. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I can't squeeze you for a bit more. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I know, Doris, that you were going to come back to me and say, can I have a fraction more? <laughs> come on, then. Please. Let me see. What have I got? Another ten pounds. Mm -hmm. Luck penny between the two of you. Okay. I put that on the table. Do we have a deal? Yes, we do. Five hundred and ten, and we have a deal. Yes. Thank you, Thank you. Thank now, you so much. You're responsible for making sure she spends it she on will. herself. She well, the will. two of you. Yeah, on both of us. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. lovely. Thank you Thank so you much. Very much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. It's you. been the pleasure. Thank you. Well, a fab result all round. All in all, our sellers have walked away with over £1,600 today. Remember Kelly? Um, it was bought in a charity shop by my husband. Her husband paid just £10 for her artist's proof print. What I'm going to do, Kelly, is I'm going to put down another £20 and I'm going to stick it at £60. Yeah, accept the money. £60. Yeah, Thank you lovely. very much. Come well on. done, Kelly. What a Thank great you. profit. Whereas Simon didn't make any money on that deal at all. He decided to give the painting to his son. How very generous of you, Simon. But he made up for it on the Andrew Beer painting. I got a feeling, and I don't really know a great deal about paintings, but I think this is worth to sell sort of around the 150 mark. He did even better than that, snapping it up for £140 and selling it for 170 at an antiques fair, grabbing him a tasty profit. <laughs> As for Corrie, she sold the silver coins onto a coin dealer for £560. It's a nice brooch. I like it. I love military items. Yes. But I do feel that is its monetary value now. Meanwhile, Mark shifted the Royal Engineer Sweetheart brooch to an English military dealer for £350. <laughs> they are by David Hennell, uh, 1747 George II. And it is nice to get a set of four. He sold all four salts for £190, making him a nifty little profit. Michael's barograph needed unexpected restoration. Whilst it cost him £200 to restore, he still managed to sell it for £600. We've had a great day. There's been lots of action, lots of buying and selling, and that's the way we like it. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for... See you.